channel. Welcome back to Restless Chipotle. Today we're going to fix one of my all-time favorite comfort foods and that's a Midwestern style chili that my mom used to make when I was growing up. She was from Michigan so she didn't make Texas style chili. She made the kind that she had grown up with which is it has more of a fresh tomato flavor and it's more like a soup than a chili so you'll see it's delicious trust me on that so i've started warming up my um my pan and it is very hot right now so um i'm going to put a little bit of oil in it and uh, i'm going to brown the meat and i guess i did let that get really good and hot yay so it takes about a pound and a half of, of ground beef I use the um, either 90-10, this one's 96-4, I mean it's mostly lean and that's why I had to let, add a little bit of oil, but one of the things that I've found is that doing it this way keeps the, um, the chili from being greasy and I really like that. So I'm going to brown this meat and um, salt it a little bit, if I can here we go. Salt and a little bit of pepper because it takes a flavor in better when it's cooking than after it's cooked. So we're going to let that brown. And while that's browning, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to uh, chop up celery, onion, and two, one two green peppers. As I said, this is more of a, um, it's, it's a fresher tasting dish than what most chili is. And um, so if you're expecting Texas style, kind of like with a thick gravy, um, that's not what this is at all, okay? And it's, it's delicious, but it's not, that kind of chili. So just to make that perfectly clear. So I'm going to go ahead and cut a bunch of this up and finish browning this and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm browning the meat and um, I put some green peppers in there. I'm going to put the rest of the green peppers in and you can see they're not chopped up small. Um, they're just, it, this is just kind of a rustic thing. You can chop them up smaller if you want to, but I don't really mess with it. And I'm adding my um, celery, which I cut up the leaves as well as the stalks, and my onions that I also cut up kind of rustically. I'm going to add all of that in there and cook it down a little bit until it gets tender. As you can see, this has got a lot of fresh vegetable, uh, vegetable flavor in it. Um, just from the onions and the green pepper. You could put garlic in this if you want. I don't really like garlic in it. It's one of the few things that I just like, that just fresh summer flavor. It just tastes to me like, like um, it came straight out of a late summer garden. And so that's what I wanna keep. But you can sure add garlic powder or fresh garlic if you want to. That's no problem at all. It, it will be good. It, just be different and this is one of those things that you can stretch as much as you need to now I know I said it before but um, my parents my mom was born in 1918 and my dad was born in 1917 so I was a late life baby um, I'm actually adopted so that's part of the reason for that but uh, point is, is that they were adults or nearly adults during the depression. So if, let's see, if mom was born in 1918, she would have been 12 in 1930 when the depression hit, uh, late 1929. So during those years, she was um, responsible. She was older, she was a teenager growing up into a young woman and they lived on a farm in Michigan. So. All of that to say that my parents um, never ever wasted 
anything. And my mom knew how to stretch a meal, even though my dad made good money. Um, my mom would take something like this and she might use a quarter of a pound of hamburger in it and then just a lot of vegetables from the garden because they always had a vegetable garden. That was another thing that they brought from the depression. Um, and they were very self-sufficient, I guess, would be the good word for that. So all of that to say that you can, can cut back on the meat if you want to and um, however you want to do it. You can add more meat if you want to, but this makes a lot. It freezes really, really well and um, it's really good the second day so you can make it, you know, you, you can make a big batch and keep it in the refrigerator and then just uh, have lunch every day or however you want to do it. This is very versatile. It's one of my most versatile recipes. My mom always made this on the coldest, the first cold day, the first time we had a cold snap. She'd call me up and she'd say, bring the kids over, I'm making chili. And boy, we would pile into the car and, and head over there for some of that because uh, because it's, like I said, it's my favorite comfort food and, and it's my older kids' favorite comfort food too. My younger kids didn't really know their grandmother very well and they didn't, oh, excuse me, spend as much time with her. So I don't think they have those same kind of memories as the older kids do. Anyway, so this all gets the, it gets brown, the, the, uh, Ground beef is all ground and cooked now. The vegetables are starting to soften a little bit. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this off the heat. And we're gonna make sure I don't burn my fingers while I do it, right? All right, we're gonna take that off the heat. And we're gonna put this on the heat because now we're gonna put it together. So then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add three 14.5 uh, ounce cans of stewed tomatoes. One, two, three. Gee, I don't know if any of y'all remember, but back in the day, um, those used to be pound cans. And it always frustrates me because nowadays, uh, I'll go back through an old recipe and it'll, you know, it'll say put in three one pound cans of stewed tomatoes or whatever and it's like you can't even find those anymore. So things, things change and we have to change with them. So the 14 and a half ounce cans are fine. If I happen to say a pound can of tomatoes, it's just because that's what my recipe says not what I you know not what's actually available it's the same thing I was noticing uh, macaroni goes in this and one of the things I was noticing was with the macaroni that my recipe calls for a pound of uh, of macaroni but the bags are now 12 and a half ounces and so you know that's that's the crazy thing about old recipes now you want to break those uh, stewed tomatoes up and I, you can do that with a spoon, but it takes forever. So if y'all will excuse me, I'm going to do it the way that I do it at home. My hands are clean. And um, I'm just gonna go in here and break it up with my fingers. It's just, I don't know, it's the easiest way to do it. This is starting to heat up and I'm used to it. You might wanna do this before you actually put yours on the stove so that you're not burning your fingers. But, you know, I have always done the things, things the hard way and I don't see any reason to stop now, right? Okay, so I'm gonna break up those stewed tomatoes. Um, it took me the longest time, after my mom passed away, it took me the longest time to figure out how to get this recipe right. It just never tasted like hers. And then, and, the, and there's another recipe too. Uh, the rest, and I don't have it on the blog yet, but I will, I'm gonna put it on this fall but for um, American goulash. And I could never get that flavor right until I realized that when she called for canned tomatoes, she, talked, she was talking about home canned tomatoes because we always 
had home canned tomatoes. And so what tastes like home canned tomatoes? Stewed tomatoes. So that's just a little hint. Oh, I've really messed up my towel now. Um, that's just a little hint that if you have an old recipe of your mom's or your grandmoms and it calls for some kind of tomatoes and you, it just won't taste right, to it, you know, no matter what you do, you can't get it to taste right, try using stewed tomatoes in it and see if that doesn't help because they have more of that home canned flavor than regular canned tomatoes. Um, I'm not going to make this into a um, a sauce or anything I'm gonna leave the tomatoes chunky in it but um, I just wanted them to be a little broken up again this is a rustic dish it's not you know it's not fancy and um, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add red kidney beans and I'm hoping that I grabbed a pot that was big enough because I'm starting to look at that and thinking that maybe I got the wrong pot, but we'll see. So then after that, you want to put in uh, tomato, not tomato juice, but tomato or vegetable juice cocktail, um, V8 or whatever kind that you use. V8's not paying me. I just, and sometimes I use it and sometimes I don't, but you're going to want um, like two quarts of it, I think is what the recipe calls for. I'm not going to put all of that in right now. Uh, I'm just going to get it started. That gives it even more tomato flavor. And then I'm going to put in my meat and green and uh, green peppers and onions mixture that I just did. Because this is all going to simmer together until all of the flavors are released. I'm going to put that in there. Now I am going to stop with putting things in there because my pan is going to overflow and I do not want that to happen. Um, and I need to put a little bit more of this in there because it has to be juicy because uh, in a minute I'm going to put the macaroni in there. You want the macaroni to simmer in there because it picks up the flavor. Uh, this is a quick kind of chili that you can do on top of the stove in an hour or less or you can put it in a slow cooker. Since it's already all cooked, you would just put it in there and um, either leave it on warm for however many hours or cook it on low for maybe four hours. Too much more than that and it's going to start to evaporate and it's just not that good. Okay, once you do that, you're going to put in a couple of teaspoons and honestly I do not have my recipe right in front of me. Um, it is across the room and I thought I was going to be able to see it, but I can't. So um, the amounts will probably be different on the recipe. Go by the recipe. Do as I do, not as, do as I say, not as I do, whatever. All right, so I'm going to put in a teaspoon and a half of cumin because I like cumin. I think it calls for two teaspoons in the recipe, I'm not sure. And this chili, this is the coolest stuff. I got this in Santa Fe and it is, um, I'm trying to get the, sto the story straight from it, but uh, I noticed on the top, it says that you have to, that the product is classified as non ready to eat. Do not consume uncooked. Please cook to 165 before consuming. And I was like, okay, that sounds really weird. So I asked the guy and I said, why is that? And he said, well, this is a heirloom chili and it's uh, grown by a lady that lives on one of the reservation areas um, north of here or south of here, whatever. And so the government doesn't inspect it and so because they don't inspect it, they have to put that on it. And I said, okay, that's the kind I want. I don't want the kind that the government inspected because I'm rebellious that way. And so this is uh, some pretty amazing chili. I'm going to put in, because it's a little spicier than what the chili powder from the store would be, I'm going to put in two teaspoons. Look how beautiful, I mean, such a beautiful color. I'm going to put in two teaspoons and leave it at that for now, and then I'll taste it in a little bit and see what, um, what we've got. All right, so I've got my cumin. I've got 
my chili, I've got the uh, salt and pepper and all of that stuff in there. So the thing that we need to do now is just kind of sit back and, um, and let it come to a boil. Now that it's starting to simmer a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and get my macaroni, which is already cooked. Um, I didn't think that you guys needed me to uh, show you how to cook macaroni, right? You just use a lot of boiling water. And I'm going to put the macaroni in here. Now, normally I would just put it all in at once, but because my pan is a little bit on the small side and I'm concerned about it overflowing and making a huge mess in my studio as opposed to making a huge mess in my kitchen, which actually happens all the time, um, I'm just going to put part of it in. So this is... Um, this would normally, I would have all of my ingredients in here, all of the uh, juice, all of the meat and vegetables simmering away, and then all of the macaroni. But, so I'm going to put, once it starts to simmer, I'm going to put the macaroni in there, and then I'm going to simmer it with the macaroni in there so that the uh, pasta gets a chance to soak up all of the flavor from the meat and the vegetables and stuff. Y'all, I am absolutely ready for this. This has been simmering for about 45 minutes. And um, as you can see, the macaroni has soaked up a lot of the uh, tomato and it's all kind of in there together. Um, I'm going to taste it so I can adjust the seasoning and it is hot. Mm. I think I want a little bit more of that chili powder in there but you got to go by taste so you know put in whatever uh, whatever amount your family likes and it also depends on the chili powder this is like extra hot and this is not supposed to be a super spicy chili this is just a warm comforting chili like like a grandma's quilt or or a hug from your mom it's it's not like a passionate hug from your hot significant other it's just a warm comforting yummy hug from mom or grandma or whatever. All right. Oh, perfect. Um, if you happen to be getting warm, comfortable hugs from your hot significant other, you guys need to think about spicing it up a little bit, in my opinion only. So there's that. You can... Um, you can thin this down with either some more of the um, vegetable juice or water, either way, if you want to thin it. I would prefer it a little bit thinner, and so I will probably thin it down. But for right now, this just looks, it smells amazing in here, and it looks fantastic too. I'm going to ladle some of this into my soup bowl here. And you know, I don't usually garnish this because it just doesn't seem to me to need a garnish. But you could, um, you could snip some fresh parsley or or something like that on top. Um, whatever you want to do. You know, I'm easy. I'm not going to argue with you. Whatever you want to do is fine with me. So that's it. Let me clean this up a little bit. Look at that. So we've got pasta and meat and tomatoes and oh my gosh, it smells so good. I'm gonna see you guys on the other side in just a minute. Oh my gosh, y'all. If you could smell it in here, it's unbelievable. So unbelievable. But so here is, you guys saw it a minute ago. Here's this and I am gonna take a bite. I have been wanting to take a bite of this like for an hour. So hot. Mm. It's good. So hot. Um, fresh tomato. 
a little that little warmth from the chili um onion and celery and um oh, just all of it comes together it's very very much garden fresh and so comforting so good on a cold day um you get you've got to try it you have got to try it cheap budget friendly whatever you want to call it family friendly freezes well you can keep it in the refrigerator for three or four days and just eat off the whole pot during that time um i, I just don't know another recipe that that i like better than this one i seriously don't so that's it for today and uh you'll be able to get the full recipe on restless chipotle and um please try it and once you try it Email me at mary at restlesschipotle.com, mary, M-A-R-Y-E, at restlesschipotle.com, and let me know what you thought. Let me, um, if you had a problem with it, or if you loved it, or if you hated it, I guess you can tell me, but be nice, because, you know, this is the South, we're nice, um, and until then, you guys didn't think I did this without wine, did ya? Until then, I'm gonna say bye, Love you guys, and I will see you next time.